But is the Telegraph's Sherelle Jacobs right in her latest piece this week when she says, with no plans to improve its resilience, Britain is heading for systems collapse? Everyone's on strike, the NHS is broken and we're skint. Where do we go from here? Well, to find the answer, let's look to the past. I'm delighted to welcome legendary historian Dr. David Starkey, who is now tonight allowing me to call him David. Hi, David. Hello, Mark. May I should say Mr. Dolan. <laughs> well, there you go. That's about all I've got in terms of titles and formalities. I'm not a doctor just yet, but I will examine you. David, um, let's talk about this. Uh, to what extent can the past tell us about the future? Well, you began talking about Parliament, mm. the thing that's behind there. I think that the, the peculiar thing about England, Britain, the reason we u ruled a quarter of the globe. Churchill, at the beginning of the First World War, do we all remember Churchill, you know? Goody Churchill, not baddie Churchill. Um, he takes a young man into the chamber of the House of Commons. This is when it seemed the world was falling to pieces, again, 1914. The chamber's empty, it's quiet, it's dark. And he says to this boy, this is why we will win. That sense of the right of national self-government, of representative government, which, remember, runs right through from the aftermath of Magna Carta to now. What's gone wrong is that. That building is where it's gone wrong. That building is where it can be put right. And the history of that building, I think, tells us how it can be put right. And how does that building, how does Parliament become rehabilitated uh, constitutionally? Institutionally and in, in, the, in the esteem of the public? Well, remember, we were, I think, all on the same side over Brexit. We made a mistake. We assumed that the threat to Parliament's sovereignty, the threat to its functionality, came from the European Union. Yes, to an extent it did, but the real enemies are here. The real, the, some of the enemies you listed. Let's just, let's just take a particular instance, something that, that we all recognise is completely mad and is absurd. Why cannot Britain shift a collection of, I hesitate to use the right word, middle class, the word begins with W, who are eco-protesters, mm -hmm. who are determined to stop everybody. You were talking about people being enclosed in their neighbourhoods. How can five or six silly people hold the entire country to ransom by closing the M25? 